What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on part four or chapter four in the SSI Diver Stress and Rescue Program. Uh, this video series is simply here to help you pass your final exam when you're taking it. We do not want you to use this video or any of the videos in this series to learn how to go out and be a rescue diver. You need to make sure you're seeking out your local SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor instructor to get properly trained. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into chapter four. Now the first part of chapter four that we're going to look at is learning how to manage accidents, whether it happens before a dive, during a dive, or even after a dive. There's several things that you should consider. You need to know what your limits and your abilities are. What have you been trained to do? such as, say, administering oxygen. If that's something you've not been trained to do, then, of course, you would want to refrain from that. Of course, keeping a written record. Anything that happens needs to go in your logbook so that you can keep a well-written record for documentation purposes. Maybe you're having to search for a missing diver. You need to make sure that if that's something that you're, uh, say, doing during a stressful situation, that you've got the right amount of air, that you're not went over your no decompression limit, and things like that. These are a lot of things that you need to consider before you go out and try to manage an accident. You may have to delegate responsibility anytime that there's a stressful situation or say an accident that has occurred while diving. Now the next part of chapter four that we're going to look at is how do we actually deal with an accident, whether it's underwater or on the surface. Maybe you did come across, say, an unconscious diver while underwater. How are you going to safely get that diver to the surface? Once you do have them at the surface, how are you going to manage this accident? Obviously, your instructor is going to teach you how to monitor their ABCs, their airway, their breathing, and compression. They're going to teach you how to call for help. They're also going to teach you how to do CPR effectively, whether it's in the water or even on the surface of the boat. Now, you may have a long tow. Your local SSI diver stress and rescue instructor is going to teach you how to safely maneuver them in the water and back onto shore or the vessel so that you can take care of them properly. Now the last part of chapter four that we're going to look at is administering immediate care, whether it's CPR, AED, or O2. And if you remember from the SSI React Right Diver program, you learned the skills and techniques on how to administer, say, proper O2, or how to apply an AED, or how to give CPR. This is something that we should never hesitate. We should immediately jump right on and help our fellow divers by administering the care they need. All right, guys, that's going to do it for Chapter 4. Stay tuned. We've got two more videos in this series for the SSI Diver Stress and Rescue Program. Once again, please do not use this series as a way to go out and be a rescue diver. Make sure you're seeking out your local SSI Diver Stress and Rescue instructor to get properly trained. Our video series is simply here to help you pass your final exam. But until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.